Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I have a video for you today on a few items I'm sending to my good buddy BJ Hill down in Virginia. So BJ asked for a sheath for his Bradford Guardian 3. He's got the sheep's foot version. Man, look at that light glinting off the edge. That is a BJ Hill sharpening job right there. Uh, just so you guys know, I'll put his information down below, but he does custom acid wash jobs and uh, sharpening and, and various other things. Sometimes he takes on jobs doing uh, knife scale handle scales he's doing some custom scales for me right now um, so anyway he's uh, he's very good at what he does he's a good friend of mine and if you guys have any sharpening acid wash possibly even handle scale jobs get in touch with him and uh, maybe he can hook you up and uh, do that for you so all right he wanted a sheath for his guardian 3 the sheep's foot version um, he has a small flashlight that he asked me to piggyback on that and actually BJ if you can comment down below let me know what this flashlight is and if this is the stock finish or if you acid washed it yourself or what the deal is uh, it's a really cool little twist light um, so we got that we have a sheath for a Leatherman Skeletool and he also asked me if I could send him one of my wallets so he <laughs> He specifically asked me just a couple days ago, he's like, hey, do you have any wallets on hand, just extras? And I already made him one like a year ago when we did our first project together, uh, when I sent him his first stuff. Uh, but he just wanted another one for color or whatever. And so I told him that I had basically one wallet kicking around and it just so happens that it is Cryptek Altitude with... Uh, Battleship Gray, I think it is, or Gunmetal Gray or something uh, in the middle. And that that is the color combination that he had asked for for the Skeletool and the Bradford Guardian 3. So it was totally coincidental that the one I had laying around was already in the exact color combination that he wanted. Uh, the only difference is that he asked for gray basket weave instead of just a flat, a flat gray. So you can see that that's a match. It. actually you know what I think that's foliage green but it's very close it looks grayish uh, so yeah very very close match on those um, okay this is a very cool sheath I'm actually gonna save this for a second to show you what am I doing with my life all right let's talk about the wallet really quick all right so I mold these uh, for a molded cash compartment on the front a molded cash I just said that didn't I a molded card compartment on the front, molded cash compartment on the back, and the logo stamped in, I've got BBCK stamped on the back, the logo stamped on the front. Basically how this works, I'm just going to show you mine. Mine's slightly different, so a leathered wallet, leather over Kydex, but you can see you just put your cards in the front there. Um, obviously I cut this one a little bit wider too, just is what it is, um, but you put your cards in the front. You can see what they are. You can use this finger push to kind of partially eject them and you know decide what, which one you need, pull it out. You can also use that to kind of put some upward pressure when you put it back in to align them nicely. Um, and then on the back, you can slip your cash in. And let me see real quick. I think this one, slightly different design. I don't think I actually cut a little finger push for the cash. Okay, yeah, this one I had left, I just left it with a lower clearance so you can actually just kind of grab your cash and pull it out. Um, mine has a finger push so you actually like push the cash up and then grab it out. Um, small differences there, but. In any event, that is the wallet. That's the BBCK wallet. This is my unique original design. I was originally doing kind of some of the minimalist designs that other people doing, and then I decided I wanted to create something that was all my own. So, got this. All right, the Skeletool. Really great Leatherman option. If you guys are looking for a multi-tool that is lightweight, compact, and has a lot of stuff in it, I'm really impressed with the Skeletool. I like this thing a lot. Um, You'll notice that I took the pocket clip off of this and I'm going to explain why with this particular sheet. 
So if you're going to order a sheath that is double layered, it's going to be thick enough that the pocket clip is actually not going to really work well with it. So let me show you real quick. If you have it oriented the traditional way, traditional, with skeletal facing outward, the word skeletal, then that pocket clip kind of gets snagged up on that tech lock. So you can't really go very deep with it. It's not going to seat all the way. It's fine. It works. You can just grab it out. But it's definitely not ideal. Um, I could make it work all the way down if I put a thick enough spacer between the uh, combat loop here, the carry clip, as well as the sheath. So if I put one between the carry clip and the sheath, then that would allow for the space to exist for that belt clip to go, or pocket clip rather, to uh, fit into. However, that widens the profile off of your belt, which I don't want to do, especially considering it's already about an inch wide. Um, so we don't, we don't need to increase that. Now if you go with the pocket clip facing outward, it's fine. You can get the, the tool pretty much all the way down into the sheath. Um, however, you can see that that causes it to kind of ramp off at this angle. And it just, that just creates a lot of standoff. So I'm not a fan of it personally. I'm not telling you it won't work. I'm just saying it doesn't work as well. And if you're wearing a sheath anyway, you don't need the pocket clip. So that's why I'm recommending just take the pocket clip off. Um, without the pocket clip, you can see it seats nice and deep. And you can go forward, backward, as well as forward and backward inverted. So you have all four directions that you can use for whatever fits your needs the best. Uh, the one thing you can't do is put it in with the axis end first. You have to put the carabiner end first uh, because it's actually designed to be too small for this to pass through, so it's a natural stopper. How I like to carry it, like I had said, kind of the traditional way, skeletal facing outward. Just slam it all the way down. You can feel it kind of squeeze when it gets down low, and there's no rattle, no play. This thing's in there nice and solid. And at the same time, all you got to do to get it out is just one finger, just lift it up from the bottom. I put my thumb on the top of the combat loop, lift it until it's loose. <laughs> Maybe don't get too excited about it, or you'll lose your skeletal, but you get the point. It's very easy to use, so I'm happy with how that came out. I love that color combination of the gray basket weave and Cryptek Altitude. Um, all right, let's take a quick look at this uh, Bradford Guardian 3 sheet. All right, so he asked me to set it up similar to uh, one of my personal sheets. I have an SC Zula with an Olight SR1 baton or SR1 mini, something like that. S1 baton mini. Man, I'm just, I'm lost. <laughs> I can't keep track of all the model numbers, but I think you guys know which one I'm talking about. Usually I have it kicking right around here. Well, whatever. Anyway, so BJ wanted a similar setup to that. Uh, so we got some reinforcement plates down here instead of doing a full over, over mold of the uh, secondary color. So I think that would hide too much of the basket weave. And then we've got just this nice one way draw tunnel style thing for the uh, for the flashlight and the flashlight actually you do have you got a couple options it's a little bit hard to draw lifting up like that but if you want to you can kind of drop it down in like this and just push the lens flush so now it's dangling it's never gonna fall out because the the actual um, emitter is too big to pass through I put a lip curled in on the bottom so it can't pass through that way and at the same time it's a really short distance to lift up like that and get it out so this is actually how I would recommend carrying it just lift and it's over all right so for whatever my two cents is worth BJ that's what I would go with and then <clears throat> for the Bradford itself, or all this is carrying on a tech lock by the way, for the Bradford itself, um, one of the things I don't like about Bradford, it's not necessarily a dislike, it's just 
some some scenarios, particularly molding a sheath and then the draw, um, it it just is kind of inconvenient. They mold Bradford's kind of shtick is I don't want to call it a shtick because that sounds like it's not functional, but one of their things, one of their trademarks is that they mold up halfway around the forward most finger choil. This typically uh, it's very comfortable. I mean, it's super comfortable, uh, and I'm not really afraid of slipping up onto the knife itself the way that I would be with some other ones that don't have the, the forward contour on the handle scales. But, you know, one of the problems with it is that with a little more handle scale, you know, if it was built up a centimeter more and following the contour of that choil, it would give me something to grip against so that when the knife is inside the sheath, it doesn't want to come out. Uh, the only thing you can do really with this particular knife is either mold entirely around the blade stock, which I don't really want to do, uh, also because it's a partly it's a partly tapered stock, start tapering into the grind, uh, unlike say in Azula where Azula has a full width blade stock nub before the choil. I don't know what what exactly this is called, but. So forgive me for my <laughs> my on-the-spot terminology, but you can see that that's not the case for the Guardian. It goes right into a sharpened edge, and it tapers into it. Um, so I could use up here to create that same retention, but it wouldn't be as good, um, and it's just not it's not ideal. So what I have to do here is mold all the way up onto this groove. Now that eliminates a lot of your finger space on the sheath, or on the handle rather because the sheath is now in the way. And obviously you can't index your knife before drawing it, which to me is a con. You know, as far as the pros and cons of how things work, that is a con. Um, however, when it comes to making a sheath that works for it, it's kind of necessary. It does work really well, and I want to kind of show you how to get around it, how to make it still be really useful, comfortable draw, and all that. What I would do, definitively, is push your push your middle finger right up against the sheath, and then use the thumb ramp, and then just index as you're drawing. So what that looks like is that it's no slower than just having an index sheath or an index uh, grip already uh, before you draw. So you can see by the time this comes out of the sheath, I'm already Marty in my full grip. So I think that eliminates the objection there. It's a little bit less comfortable, so it might take a little bit of practice to get good at it, uh, but I don't think it's an issue. The other thing you can do is literally just grip it and rip it. It's going to be on your belt, so you can literally just grab it off like that if you're in that kind of emergency situation where you don't feel you have time to use the thumb ramp or something. You can quite easily just grip. Alright, so that's what I got for you. Um, I really like this sheath. This color combination is beautiful. He had good taste there. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Bradford knives. In general, I know I was kind of poo-pooing on that handle scales choil thing, but truly, that doesn't bother me. As a user, I love their knives. So, let me know what you guys think of this stuff down below. Get some conversations going. What's your favorite Bradford Guardian? And uh, how does it compare to some of the other smaller EDC knives that you guys know and love, like the Azula, Azula 2, and uh, if anybody else wants to throw some other ones out there, I'd love to uh, hear your, your favorite small EDC knife opinion. So if you guys like this gear, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like my channel, I ask you to subscribe to it, and uh, definitely let's get some conversations going down below. Also let me know what your favorite Leatherman is, what you think of the Skeletool if you've used it, and uh, alright guys. That's what I got for you. So like, share, comment, subscribe, and stick around for the next one. God bless.